Welcome to Shore Church of God. My name is Jared, and I have the honor and privilege of being your pastor this morning. It is our mission to reach, grow, and serve the community for Christ here at the church. We reach by inviting everybody we know to on line and in-person services when those are available. We grow by jumping into our next steps guide. It's found on our website and we serve by joining with our community whenever that is possible. It's so good for you all to be here this morning. I hope you've had a fantastic and wonderful Christmas time that has been magical and uplifting and you got to remember the birth of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together this morning. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for who you are, what you're doing in our lives. Lord, we ask you to be with us and guide us that you would form us in a way that this next year um, is one of the greatest years of our lives. That we uh, come before you, not with the regrets of our past, but with hope in a future. Lord, we love you and we praise your name. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us announcements for you this morning. The first is our prayer Zoom happens every Wednesday at one o'clock. So if you are available, we'd love to have you participate in that. If you're not available, but you have prayer requests or have something we'd like, you'd like us to, um, to pray about on Wednesdays, please send an email or Facebook us or just get a hold of us in some way. We would love, love to pray for you. This has been such a rewarding and wonderful time. If your Wednesdays have opened up and you feel like, I don't know if I can join that. It's been going on for a while. You are more than welcome uh, to jump on in that prayer Zoom. It is a great, great time. Uh, and you will not be forced to pray or anything like that. Uh, it's a pretty casual and just wonderful environment. So uh, please come and check that out. Uh, second thing I have for you today is this is the last week for the Christmas offering to be taken up. So if you forgot to do that last week or you've been, you forgot to talk about it with your spouse or and all those different things, uh, this is the week to get that in. And I just want to make sure you don't miss that wonderful uh, Christmas offering opportunity. Uh, here at the church. 
And the third thing I have for you today is our next steps guide. As we jump into this next year, as 2021 is just a few days away, maybe one of the things you want to do at this time is start a Bible reading plan. Now, if you need help doing that, I would love, love, love to guide you in that. Um, If you want to read the Bible through, you want to do all kinds of different things, there's all kinds of ways to get started with that. Here at the church, we have a done-for-you 40-day plan, found it, and we call it our Next Steps Guide. This is written by people inside our church, and it takes you on in just a, a nice journaling, Bible reading journey for 40 days. Um, once you get that in, you're going to probably want some more and, and want to know what, you're, what to do to take your next steps. But that's, that's for you there. So we have that done for you. Why don't you start off your year right that way? If you've done it before, it's still a great place to start your year off this year. Okay. At this time, we're going to take up our tithes and offerings. Uh, the quickest and easiest way to give is always online. You can do this on our app that's found at the Google Play or the App Store, or you can do it at our website. It takes about 45 seconds to set up for the first time, about two clicks of your thumb after you've done that. As always, you can set up reoccurring giving, so you don't have to uh, deal with that whole, oh, did we do it? Did we not? I don't, oh, I forgot it, um, thing that we all like to do throughout the week. Um, thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for making uh, 2020 a fantastic year, even though it had its ups and downs, its craziness, and things were such a challenge at all kinds of different times. And not that they're going to stop being a challenge just because the year is over, uh, but uh, church, we've come together in an amazing way. We've gotten to do all kinds of beautiful, wonderful things for people, um, for our community, and we've really come together and uh, continued our generous uh, spirit. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart in that. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for today, and thank you for this church. Lord, I ask you to bless us and guide us as we uh, prepare ourselves for this next year, as we take these steps, um, whatever they may be for us. Maybe we've been Um, feeling it's a time to move, a time to um, change something in our lives. And Lord, would you give us the discernment and the encouragement and the um, just the courage to take the steps that you're calling us to do. Lord, I thank you for this, this moment. I thank you that we get to be present, that we get to participate and whatever that looks like online or in person or, um, just with our friends or whatever our, our this season looks like for us. Lord, we just we thank you for being present with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to
time new year's going to happen this week and so that means it puts in perspective all these different things that we have in life christmas is gone uh we still have, probably have all the decorations still up in our house and we're kind of in our christmas hangover of all the the fun stuff that we got to do uh and, and eat uh or the presents we got to open and all those things i hope this christmas was a fantastic time for you but now we're switching our mind we're switching our thought processes to the new year and i don't know if you've thought about the new year i i'm, I'm sure we have right we've all thought oh 2020 can't end soon enough give me 2021 like let's just write this off in the history of mankind it's just going to go from 2019 to 2021 we're just going to and 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 delete it well unfortunately I understand that, that that concept, but unfortunately, that's not going to change everything in our life. Um, just because the calendar clicked over doesn't mean that things happen. COVID is still going to be a reality and uh, until we can get that all under control. Uh, the things that we've got to do are, are still realities. Um, just because the calendar switch doesn't change those things. Unfortunately, I'm sorry if that's going to break your heart this morning and you were, you were hoping for different news. But this is a moment as we click into New Year's, as we click into this, uh, it's always a moment of self-reflection. It's always a moment in which we kind of look at what do we want for ourselves in this next year? What do I want to get rid of? What do I want to add? What do I, what is this next year going to look like? And so that's where we're going to go today. And if you uh, have a Bible with you, turn in your Bible to John chapter 15, to John chapter 15. We're going to be there. Uh, this morning, and uh, if you have an electronic or whatever, just go ahead and get to, get that ready so you can take your notes and and be a part of that. This year, it's been really easy for us to feel stuck. Right? You may have felt stuck at home. You may have been 
uh, stuck in your job, stuck with your family, stuck with um, choices that you've made, choices like, like you just feel stuck because for so much of this year we were supposed to stay home. You're supposed to, you can't go out to this place, you can't go to this place. I was talking to uh, Kelly and she's like, yeah, I haven't left the house in this many days because she was supposed to stay there and, and work was there and everything was everything was just there and, and you can go several days, maybe even a week or something. You know, have I actually been outside? Like, I, I don't even remember. And it's so easy in this time period and this feeling to feel stuck. And so as we examine ourselves in this time uh, and get ready for 2021, let's break free of that stuckness and take some steps to at least spiritually and emotionally to, to pu- push through that. We may still be... Um, unfortunately, in our homes for a while longer, but uh, maybe we could free ourselves spiritually and emotionally in this time. And that's where I really want to uh, center in today and talk about what we've invited into our lives and what we need to remove from our lives uh, in this time, because the baggage of 2020 can dramatically affect our future in 2021 if we let it. The dead things of 2020, the, the, the mistakes and the hurt feelings and the frustrations and the anxieties of 2020 can easily derail our 2021 before it even starts if we let it, if we don't do the appropriate actions to kind of cleanse ourselves of that. So this year, let's focus on bringing life instead of dwelling on the dead, on the past, on the stuff, on the junk. So this year, we, we've got to commit to ourselves. If, if you're in a relationship, if you've uh, if you're married, you, you can easily kind of hold each other accountable to this. Let's focus in on how we bring life to where we're at, the circumstances we're in, instead of focusing on the old, instead of focusing on the regrets, instead of focusing on the dead. So that is that is a main huge attitude shift we can start to do. Because 2020 is really easy to think about all the stuff we didn't get to do. I can make a really long list of all the stuff that got canceled. Uh, this year, but I don't want to do that because then I just, I go back to regrets I had in August and that's not going to do me no good when I'm trying to live the best God honoring January that I possibly can. So let's focus on bringing life instead of dwelling on the dead. So Kelly and I, I've talked about this before. Kelly and I used to have two pre-planned fights a year, two pre-planned fights a year. The, every year we get frustrated with each other about this and it's what happened. It's when we brought dead things into our house. What dead things am I talking about? I'm talking about the Christmas tree, right? We have a pre-planned fight of how that's going to go. Because when you bring in this dead tree in your house, pine needles go everywhere, things get happen, the ceiling gets squished because for some reason one of the people in our in my marriage thinks uh, we have 10-foot ceilings when we only have 8-foot ceilings, and uh, paint jobs get ruined that way, and all kinds of stuff happens. So we have these pre-planned fights. We know they're going to happen, and we've actually done a pretty good job of kind of, of removing that. But the early parts of our marriage, this was always an anxious and frustrating time when we brought this dead tree into our lives. We do the same thing in our own lives when we bring dead stuff into it. Now, whatever that dead stuff may look like, it may be bad relationships, bad decisions, dumb hobbies, uh, time sucks of whatever that may be, and it just, it's, 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 they're dead things. They don't offer life. They don't bring goodness into our life. They don't honor God in our lives, and all they are is, they're dead things in our life, and they start to, to deteriorate our relationships. Often we invite these dead things in our life, just like a Christmas tree. Right? We invited it into our lives. I paid good money for this Christmas tree to come into my home, for a dead plant to take centerpiece in my living room. Now, The silliness of that is not lost on me, and I hope you get it. But as silly as that is, we do this with different things in our life all the time. Whether that's what we click on on the internet, whether that's uh, what we consume all the time, whether that's what we're eating, whether that's what we're um, just spending our time with. They're not fruitful activities, and we've invited them in over and over and over again to take a a huge portion of, of who we are and the time God has given us. And we've invited dead things into it. See, we dwell on dead things. 
See, just like this tree, I love a Christmas tree that's all decorated with the beautiful lights and the Christmas presents underneath it and uh, all the ornaments that, and the sentimentality of all those ornaments. I love when the house is quiet and go sit in front of the Christmas tree and just enjoy it. But the funny thing is, is I'm dwelling on a dead thing. I'm dwelling on it. I'm, I'm, I'm loving every minute in front of this dead thing and this doesn't bring life. That tree's not going to magically grow. It's not going to plant itself there. It's never going to offer uh, shade to any more animals. It's never going to, um, after that initial great smell when you bring it into the house, it's, it's done even with that. All it offers is shedding and messes and broken dreams when the limbs get too droopy and precious ornaments slide off of it and shatter. That's all that's left of that. Is that depressing enough for you? I apologize if that's, that's hurting your feelings. But that's, we do that for kind of the dead things that we bring into our life. The second thing is we lie to make dead things seem alive. We lie to make dead things seem alive. Now, this happens with our Christmas tree, but it also happens with the stuff in your life that offers no fruit, the, the stuff in your life that doesn't give life. We lie about it. We just lie to ourselves most often that, oh, yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. That has this redeeming quality. As a Christmas tree, we lie to ourselves. This tree has been cut off from its source. It is dead. It's done. The Christmas tree is done. It's, it's not coming back. We baby that thing. We continue to water it, right? You continue to give it water, and some of us have gotten these you know, miracle grow bottles to spray in the bottom to kind of nurture it back to life. It's dead. It's not coming back. And so all we're doing is prolonging its misery. Thankfully, that don't, trees don't feel pain because this would be very cool. But we lie to ourselves that this thing is, 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 is giving us life. Now, it's beautiful and whatnot, but we do this so often with how we spend our time and the things in our life, maybe even relationships in our life. They're not giving us joy. They're not drawing us closer to God. They're not helping us become the people that we want to be and the people that God has called us to be. They're actually just dead things. Messing up our life. Causing fights where fights don't need to happen. In John chapter 15, verse 1, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will remain even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers, and such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. It's very important for us to start to understand this This scripture is that far too often we feel like we're trying to be in control of our own lives. We're trying to be in control of the situations. We've got to have it all handled. But if you look at John chapter 15, God is saying, Jesus is saying in this, in this scripture, I have it under control. I am the vine. Apart from me, you don't do anything. Apart from me, you're a dead thing. Your life and the production of your life is are dead things. But in me is where fruit comes from, where, where life comes from. So the truth of that is we get to participate in what God is up to, not dictate it. The branches don't tell the trunk of the tree or the trunk of the branch to, well, why don't you grow over here? Why don't you do this? And I find myself very often, especially when things are getting hard in life, is telling God what he should or shouldn't do. That's not our role. It's not who we are. So instead, we find ourselves cut off from the the nourishment, cut off from the vine, because we wanted to do our own thing. We wanted to grow our own way. We wanted to uh, experience something else that wasn't fruitful, that now that we look at it, was only providing dead things and only, only leading us and our heart and our soul to dead ways. What happens when that happens? We're cut off. It's thrown in the fire. There's stuff in our own lives that we need to be looking at. 
that we need to be pruning back and saying, that's not giving life. That's not leading us to a fruitful place. That's not of God. That's, I never even prayed if I should be doing that. I never stepped foot into that. I, I, just, I didn't even consult God on these things. No wonder it's not providing life. No wonder it's only causing anxiety and stress and frustration. We get to participate in what God is up to, not dictate it. The truth of going back to the Christmas tree is that the longer that we have dead things in our life, the messier it is to get rid of it. The longer you hold on to dead things, the messier your problems will be. The the longer you hold on to dead relationships, dead hobbies, dead habits, dead problems, the messier it is to get rid of it. Look at the Christmas tree. Now, if you get rid of it today, you're still going to be probably okay. If you wait until Valentine's Day to take out the Christmas tree, you're going to have some issues, right? The branches have now gotten stiff and um, the water underneath there, because it didn't suck it all up, there's, there's going to be some like goo, pine sappy, nasty tar goo. And this is where the fight with Kelly and I usually came into is I just want to take the tree out. I grew up with artificial trees. This was a, a, not a thing. I didn't know that I kind of needed to like tarp out my house so I didn't get this goo all over the place. And now I've got pine needles and sap and, and, and goo water all over the place. And I'm so frustrated with it. I just throw it in the backyard. I, it's just the way it, uh, life goes with that. But um, it, it's true for this tree, but it's also true for your life and for my life. The longer I let messy stuff, dead stuff, just stay around in my life, the messier it's going to be when I try to remove it. And so maybe this year, and the caution for... 2020 was we probably allowed some stuff in our relationships. We allowed some stuff in our parenting. We allowed some stuff even in our work ethic that uh, we thought it was just going to be until June. We just, you know, thought, oh, I'll just do that until I can get by. This is going to placate the kids for this moment. And now we've started to see that we created bad habits and we grew some some vines that don't need to be going there and they're not bearing any fruit and actually they're causing all kinds of problems. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be messy cutting away those vines and pruning yourself and pruning your family and pruning these habits away. But if you let them grow, if you let them take, like go farther and farther and farther, it's going to be messier and more hurtful when you have to cut those away years from now. So yeah. Yeah. Am I encouraging you to do some hard stuff? It's pruning. It's taking away. The longer you hold on to dead things, the messier your problems are going to be. This idea, the idea is theosis. It's the Greek word theosis, to become more like God. Theosis. Not in like some huge ego type trip way, but My goal each and every day is to become more and more like God who loves me, that I would resemble Jesus in the way in which I love, the way in which I care, the way in which I give, the way in which I orchestrate my life. And so this theosis, this becoming more and more like God, is the driving, uh, one of the driving factors of my life. And what that requires is a spiritual pruning over and over and over again, just like some beautiful bonsai tree or or a beautiful award-winning rose bush. There's oh, continuously pruning needs to happen over and over and over again to get the best blooms, to become the most fruitful, to be the most beautiful whatever it is it can be. And the same thing is for us. As we strive to be more and more like God, there has to be continually uh, pruning happening over and over and over again. In verse 2, Jesus says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. I prune the bad stuff, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it'll be even more fruitful. So he prunes the good stuff, and he prunes the bad stuff. So uh, for a lot of us, we're like, oh my goodness, my life just seems hard and, and, and rough right now. Well, maybe you're going through a season of pruning, and it's 
just because it's been pruned, just because things have been cut back, doesn't necessarily mean that wasn't of God. And we have to be very discerning and prayerfully considering, is this a pruning because I bore fruit, or is this a pruning because it was dead? And you have to think through that pretty hardcore and bringing uh, that to to God over and over again. God, this this feels like it's of you. It feels good. It feels it feels true. Is it? Well, uh, it, that's they've got to be praying and, and journaling through that to make sure that you're you're in the right spot. An attitude shift is required when we deal with pruning. And this is consider it an honor to be pruned. Consider it an honor to be pruned. Because what did Jesus just say? Like the gardener is paying special attention to you. Think about that. The gardener is, sp- is, is, is spending special attention and time on you. So it's an honor to be pruned. The bad stuff is being cut away, but the, the stuff that is bearing fruit is going to be cut back so it can bear even more fruit. It will bloom even more. The grapes will be even more uh, n- luscious next year, whatever that may be. Consider it an honor to be pruned. What does this show? Why should I be honored to be pruned? It shows you are growing. It shows you're bearing fruit. And it shows you're effective. It shows you're growing. It shows you're bearing fruit. And it shows you're effective. Often where you want growth is where you need the most pruning. And this is a hard concept to to learn because we we think, hey, I'm good at something. I did that well. I, I succeeded there. I don't need to work on it anymore. I mastered that. Well, well, the gardener says, no, 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 you did well, but I'm going to cut back a little bit more so you can even be better than that. And that's a different kind of mindset. We, we want to, like, complete it and put it away. But God treats our walk with him as gardening, as planting, not as something that you can be completed and something to be checked off a list, but an ongoing relationship where we're continuously growing and continually needing to go through the phases of growth so that we can bear the most fruit possible. So this morning, I want you to examine your life right now. Maybe it recalibrates how you look at your New Year's resolutions if you do those things. But look at them as through the filter of what needs to be pruned, how this needs to be pruned, what what is fruitful that needs to be cut back, and what is uh, just dead that needs to be chopped off. What are the dead things that you bring into your life? And this may take some time after this message just to think about that. What are the dead things that I've brought into my life? Are there, there, there things that I was using as a coping mechanism to get through this past year that really are just kind of dead? And they're not offering life for me. They're not giving me more. They're not, they're not building me up and they're not building my family up and they're not leading anybody else to Jesus. They're really just dead things. Can we be honest enough with ourselves that we probably brought some of those things into our life? What are those dead things? What do I need to cut away? Where do I need to prune? Where in your life do you want new life? <clears throat> Where in your life do you want new life? Is there an aspect? Maybe you you know you need to work on your, your parenting or the relationship with your kids isn't what you want it to be. What do you need to cut in your life, what needs to be pruned back so that those relationships can flourish? Maybe your relationship with your spouse isn't what you wanted. What what needs to be pruned there so that um, it can work better? Maybe your relationship with God isn't what it needs to be, what what you long for it to be. If you're really honest, then what needs to be cut there? What, What in your life needs to be pruned? Where do you want new life to take place? Verse 3, I love this promise of Jesus. You are already clean because the word I have spoken to you. The scripture is the pruning force. The scripture is is cleaning away of the the riffraff that is uh, growing on our trunk of our tree, right? The, the, The scripture is that. And if we're not engaging into scripture, if we're not committing into reading the Bible, if we're not jumping into that, we don't have this cleaning force. We don't have this... uh, this cut, uh, cutting happening. And so if we don't know what we're supposed to prune, I'm like, oh, I, I feel like I should prune this. We can get some really bad ideas. We can hack and slash and, and, and cut back plants that don't actually need to 
didn't need to be cut back that way because we haven't been holding it up to the shears of the scripture. So if you are wanting to take the steps in this, I really want to encourage you to get in the scripture. Maybe you need to read the Sermon on the Mount, or maybe uh, there's all kinds of non-intimidating scriptures that you can you can be in, in, engaged with this time to know what needs to be pruned in my life, where I need to go from here. See, the fights in my marriage about happen when I bring dead things into my home. Now they center around a Christmas tree, but I can guarantee you the other fights in my marriage happen when one of us bring dead things into our relationship. The second fights we have is when we try to remove the dead things from our relationship. When we try to remove this tree from our life. Because it's messy and it's hard. And so if you're going to enter into a, a moment um, of, of pruning, you need to be really clear and be prepared for like, this is going to be uncomfortable for other people. Like just, just if you have a, a, a child that you've let watch TV for eight hours a day for the last 10 months, and all of a sudden you say, hey, we're going to only watch you know, one show a day. Uh, be prepared for some exciting conversations with, with that child and some acting out and stuff like that. You've got to be willing to pay the price for what it means to prune, whether that's with you know, video games or other habits that have, that have happened. Uh, maybe you know, there's all, for us, it's like, hey, you need to eat something out of the refrigerator before you get into the pantry. That's what we've been working on lately. Uh, something fresh, some, you know, something called a vegetable, maybe, before you eat your thousandth goldfish cracker of the week. Whatever that may be, but we've got to start working through these uh, these issues so that we can have life again, so that we can work through this pruning. But dealing with that, removing the dead things from our lives will be messy. And the longer you've allowed it to be in your life, the messier it will be. That is a promise. That is what's going to happen. However, it's worth the act of pruning. Because if we love it so much, we want life to come from it, it is worth pruning. The discipline acts that you have to do in parenting are, is worth the pruning because of the fruit that you want to see, not your momentary happiness in this time. That may be hard and it may be months of work, but it's worth it. The same goes for our parenting. The same goes for our, our marriage. The same goes for all the habits that we have in our life. This year, let's focus on bringing life instead of dwelling on the dead. This year, let's focus on bringing life instead of dwelling on the dead. This year, maybe we identify the dead things and remove them. This year, may we open ourselves to pruning to be made more fruitful. This year, may we look for ways to bear our spiritual fruit into people's lives. This year can be a dramatically wonderful year in our life. If we are committed to being the most fruitful person we possibly can be, to being who God is calling us to be. And we get the dead things out of our house, out of our lives, and step into the life that God has for us. Let's pray this morning. God, thank you so much for today, and thank you for this time. Lord, I ask you to uh, prepare our hearts and our minds for your divine pruning, that you would shine a light so bright on the areas of our lives that need to be adjusted, need to be removed, need to be cut back, um, that we couldn't help but notice uh, that these changes are, are just easy to identify. I know these changes won't be easy, Lord, but I, I do pray and I ask that they would be easy to identify. Will you make it clear and known to us what we need to uh, modify in our lives, what we need to take big swings at and what we need to wholesale just um, slash and burn or what just needs tweaks? God, we trust you with these shears. We trust you with these the pruning knife to make us a beautiful and fruitful person, that our lives will be oriented into growing your spiritual fruit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you all the days of your life. You are dismissed. Bye.